Popper's experiment is an experiment proposed by the philosopher Karl Popper to put to the test different interpretations of quantum mechanics QM. In fact, as early as 1934, Popper started criticizing the increasingly more accepted Copenhagen interpretation, a popular subjectivist interpretation of quantum mechanics. Therefore, in his most famous book Logic der Forschung he proposed a first experiment alleged to empirically discriminate between the Copenhagen interpretation and a realist interpretation, which he advocated. Einstein, however, wrote a letter to Popper about the experiment in which he raised some crucial objections and Popper himself would have declared that this first attempt was a gross mistake for which I have been deeply sorry and ashamed of ever since. Popper, however, came back to the foundations of quantum mechanics from 1948, when he developed his criticism of determinism in both quantum and classical physics. As a matter of fact, Popper greatly intensified his research activities on the foundations of quantum mechanics throughout the 1950s and 1960s developing his interpretation of quantum mechanics in terms of real existing probabilities propensities, also thanks to the support of a number of distinguished physicists such as David Bohm. Topic. Overview In 1980, Popper proposed perhaps his more important, yet overlooked, contribution to QM, a new simplified version of the EPR experiment. The experiment was however published only two years later, in the third volume of the Postscript to the Logic of Scientific Discovery. The most widely known interpretation of quantum mechanics is the Copenhagen interpretation put forward by Niels Bohr and his school. It maintains that observations lead to a wavefunction collapse, thereby suggesting the counterintuitive result that two well-separated, non-interacting systems require action at a distance. Popper argued that such non-locality conflicts with common sense, and would lead to a subjectivist interpretation of phenomena, depending on the role of the observer. While the EPR argument was always meant to be a thought experiment, put forward to shed light on the intrinsic paradoxa of QM, Popper's proposed an experiment which could have been experimentally implemented, and participated to a physics conference organized in Bari in 1983, to present his experiment and propose to the experimentalists to carry it out at the actual realization of Popper's experiment required the new techniques which make use of the phenomenon of spontaneous parametric down conversion, which were not yet been exploited at that time, so that the experiment was eventually performed only in 1999, five years after Popper had died. <laughs> Popper's proposed experiment Contrarily to the first mistaken proposal of 1934, Popper's experiment of 1980 exploits couples of entangled particles, in order to put to the test Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Indeed, Popper maintains, I wish to suggest a crucial experiment to test whether knowledge alone is sufficient to create uncertainty and, with it, scatter as is contended under the Copenhagen interpretation, or whether it is the physical situation that is responsible for the scatter. Popper's proposed experiment consists of a low-intensity source of particles that can generate pairs of particles traveling to the left and to the right along the x-axis. The beam's low intensity is so that the probability is high that two particles recorded at the same time on the left and on the right are those which have actually interacted before emission. There are two slits, one each in the paths of the two particles. Behind the slits are semicircular arrays of counters which can detect the particles after they pass through the slits see fig. 1. These counters are coincident counters so that they only detect particles that have passed at the same time through A and B. Popper argued that because the slits localize the particles to a narrow region along the y-axis, from the uncertainty principle they experience large uncertainties in the y-components of their momenta. This larger spread in the momentum will show up as particles being detected even at positions that lie outside the regions where particles would normally reach based on their initial momentum spread. Popper suggests that we count the particles in coincidence, i.e., we count only those particles behind slit B, whose partner has gone through slit A particles which are not able to pass through slit A are ignored. The Heisenberg scatter for both the beams of particles going to the right and to the left, is tested by making the two slits A and B wider or narrower. If the slits are narrower, then counters should come into play which are higher up and lower down, seen from the slits. 
The coming into play of these counters is indicative of the wider scattering angles which go with a narrower slit, according to the Heisenberg relations. Now the slit at A is made very small and the slit at B very wide. Popper wrote that, according to the EPR argument, we have measured position y for both particles the one passing through A and the one passing through B with the precision delta y display style delta y and not just for particle passing through slit a this is because from the initial entangled epr state we can calculate the position of the particle 2 once the position of particle 1 is known with approximately the same precision we can do this argues popper even though slit b is wide open therefore popper states that fairly precise knowledge quote quote about the y position of particle 2 is made, its y position is measured indirectly. And since it is, according to the Copenhagen interpretation, our knowledge which is described by the theory, and especially by the Heisenberg relations, it should be expected that the momentum p y of particle 2 scatters as much as that of particle 1, even though the slit a is much narrower than the widely opened slit at b, now the scatter can, in principle, be tested with the help of the counters. If the Copenhagen interpretation is correct, then such counters on the far side of B that are indicative of a wide scatter and of a narrow slit should now count coincidences, counters that did not count any particles before the slit A was narrowed. To sum up, if the Copenhagen interpretation is correct, then any increase in the precision in the measurement of our mere knowledge of the particles going through slit B should increase their scatter. Popper was inclined to believe that the test would decide against the Copenhagen interpretation, as it is applied to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. If the test decided in favor of the Copenhagen interpretation, Popper argued, it could be interpreted as indicative of action at a distance. The debate Many viewed Popper's experiment as a crucial test of quantum mechanics, and there was a debate on what result an actual realization of the experiment would yield. In 1985, Sudbury pointed out that the EPR state, which could be written as psi y 1 y 2 equals minus infinity infinity e i K Y one E minus I K Y two D K Display style psi y underscore one y underscore two equals int underscore in a t carrot in a t e carrot I K Y underscore one E carrot I K Y underscore two D K already contained an infinite spread in momenta tacit in the integral over k, so no further spread could be seen by localizing one particle. Although it pointed to a crucial flaw in Popper's argument, its full implication was not understood. Cripps theoretically analyzed Popper's experiment and predicted that narrowing slit A would lead to momentum spread increasing at slit B. Cripps also argued that his result was based just on the formalism of quantum mechanics, without any interpretational problem. Thus, if Popper was challenging anything, he was challenging the central formalism of quantum mechanics. In 1987, there came a major objection to Popper's proposal from Collet and Loudon. They pointed out that because the particle pairs originating from the source had a zero total momentum, the source could not have a sharply defined position. They showed that once the uncertainty in the position of the source is taken into account, the blurring introduced washes out the Popper effect. Furthermore, Redhead analyzed Popper's experiment with a broad source and concluded that it could not yield the effect that Popper was seeking. <laughs> Realization of Popper's experiment Popper's experiment was realized in 1999 by Kim and Shi using a spontaneous parametric down conversion photon source. They did not observe an extra spread in the momentum of particle 2 due to particle 1 passing through a narrow slit. They write, Indeed, it is astonishing to see that the experimental results agree with Popper's prediction. 
Through quantum entanglement one may learn the precise knowledge of a photon's position and would therefore expect a greater uncertainty in its momentum under the usual Copenhagen interpretation of the uncertainty relations. However, the measurement shows that the momentum does not experience a corresponding increase of uncertainty. Is this a violation of the uncertainty principle? Rather, the momentum spread of particle 2 observed in coincidence with particle 1 passing through slit A was narrower than its momentum spread in the initial state. They concluded that, Popper and EPR were correct in the prediction of the physical outcomes of their experiments. However, Popper and EPR made the same error by applying the results of two particle physics to the explanation of the behavior of an individual particle. The two-particle entangled state is not the state of two individual particles. Our experimental result is emphatically not a violation of the uncertainty principle which governs the behavior of an individual quantum." This led to a renewed heated debate, with some even going to the extent of claiming that Kim and Xi's experiment had demonstrated that there is no non-locality in quantum mechanics. Unakrishnan, 2001, discussing Kim and Shi's result, wrote that the result is a solid proof that there is no state reduction at a distance. Popper's experiment and its analysis forces us to radically change the current held view on quantum nonlocality. Short criticized Kim and Shi's experiment, arguing that because of the finite size of the source, the localization of particle 2 is imperfect, which leads to a smaller momentum spread than expected. However, Short's argument implies that if the source were improved, we should see a spread in the momentum of particle 2. Sancho carried out a theoretical analysis of Popper's experiment, using the path integral approach, and found a similar kind of narrowing in the momentum spread of particle 2, as was observed by Kim and Shi. Although this calculation did not give them any deep insight, it indicated that the experimental result of Kim Shi agreed with quantum mechanics. It did not say anything about what bearing it has on the Copenhagen interpretation, if any. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Criticism of Popper's proposal. Tabish Qureshi has published the following analysis of Popper's argument: the ideal EPR state is written as psi equals minus infinity. Infinity Y Y D Y equals minus infinity infinity P minus P D P Display style psi wrangle equals int underscore in a t carrot in a t y y wrangle die equals int underscore in a t carrot in a t p p wrangle d p, where the two labels in the ket state represent the positions or momenta of the two particle. This implies perfect correlation, meaning detecting particle one at position x zero. Display style x underscore zero will also lead to particle 2 being detected at x 0 display style x underscore 0 if particle 1 is measured to have a momentum p 0 display style p underscore 0 particle 2 will be detected to have a momentum minus p 0 display style p underscore 0 the particles in this state have infinite momentum spread, and are infinitely delocalized. However, in the real world, correlations are always imperfect. Consider the following entangled state psi y 1 y 2 equals a minus infinity infinity d p e Minus p two four sigma two e minus i p y two e i p y one e x p minus y one plus 
Y two two sixteen Omega two Display style psi y underscore one y underscore two equals a int underscore in a t carrot in a t d p e carrot p carrot two four sigma carrot two e carrot i p y underscore two h b a r e carrot i p y underscore one h b a r e x p y underscore one plus y underscore two carrot two sixteen omega carrot two where sigma display style sigma represents a finite momentum spread and omega display style omega is a measure of the position spread of the particles the uncertainties in position and momentum for the two particles can be written as delta p 2 equals delta p 1 equals sigma 2 plus 2 16 omega 2 delta y 1 equals delta y 2 equals omega 2 plus 2 16 sigma 2 Display style delta p underscore two equals delta p underscore one equals sqrt sigma caret two plus h bar caret two sixteen omega caret two tilde 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 delta y underscore one equals delta y underscore two equals sqrt omega caret two plus h bar caret two sixteen sigma caret two the action of a narrow slit on particle 1 can be thought of as reducing it to a narrow Gaussian state phi 1 y 1 equals 1 e 2 2 pi 1 4 e minus y 1 2 4 e 2 Display style phi underscore one y underscore one equals frac one epsilon caret two two pi caret one quarter e caret y underscore one caret two four epsilon caret two. This will reduce the state of particle two to phi two y two equals minus infinity infinity psi y 1 y 2 phi 1 y 1 d y 1 Display style phi underscore two y underscore two equals int underscore in a t carrot in a t psi y underscore one y underscore two phi underscore one carrot asterisk y underscore one die underscore one the momentum uncertainty of particle 2 can now be calculated and is given by delta p 2 equals sigma 2 1 plus e 2 omega 2 plus 2 16 omega 2 1 plus 4 e 2 sigma 2 2 plus 1 16 omega 2 Display style delta p underscore two equals sqrt frac sigma caret two one plus epsilon caret two omega caret two plus h bar caret two sixteen omega caret two one plus four epsilon caret two sigma caret two h bar caret two plus one sixteenth omega caret two. If we go to the extreme limit of slit A being infinitesimally narrow, e zero. Display style epsilon to zero. The momentum uncertainty of particle two is lim e zero delta p two 
equals sigma 2 plus 2 16 omega 2 Display style lim underscore epsilon to zero delta p underscore two equals sqrt sigma caret two plus hbar caret two sixteen omega caret two, which is exactly what the momentum spread was to begin with. In fact, one can show that the momentum spread of particle two, conditioned on particle one going through slit A, is always less than or equal to sigma two plus two. 16 omega 2 display style sqrt sigma caret 2 plus hbar caret 2 16 omega caret 2 the initial spread for any value of e sigma display style epsilon sigma n omega display style omega thus particle 2 does not acquire any extra momentum spread than what it already had this is the prediction of standard quantum mechanics. So, the momentum spread of particle 2 will always be smaller than what was contained in the original beam. This is what was actually seen in the experiment of Kim and Shi. Popper's proposed experiment, if carried out in this way, is incapable of testing the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. On the other hand, if slit A is gradually narrowed, the momentum spread of particle 2 conditioned on the detection of particle 1 behind slit A will show a gradual increase never beyond the initial spread, of course. This is what quantum mechanics predicts. Popper had said less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 if the Copenhagen interpretation is correct, then any increase in the precision in the measurement of our mere knowledge of the particles going through slit B should increase their scatter. This particular aspect can be experimentally tested. Topic: <laughs> Popper's experiment and ghost diffraction. It has been shown that this effect has actually been demonstrated experimentally in the so-called two-particle ghost interference experiment. This experiment was not carried out with the purpose of testing Popper's ideas, but ended up giving a conclusive result about Popper's test. In this experiment two entangled photons travel in different directions. Photon 1 goes through a slit, but there is no slit in the path of photon 2. However, photon 2, if detected in coincidence with a fixed detector behind the slit detecting photon 1, shows a diffraction pattern. The width of the diffraction pattern for photon 2 increases when the slit in the path of photon 1 is narrowed. Thus, increase in the precision of knowledge about photon 2, by detecting photon 1 behind the slit, leads to increase in the scatter of photons 2. <laughs> Popper's experiment and faster-than-light signaling The expected additional momentum scatter which Popper wrongly attributed to the Copenhagen interpretation can be interpreted as allowing faster-than-light communication, which is thought to be impossible, even in quantum mechanics. Indeed, some authors have criticized Popper's experiment based on this impossibility of superluminal communication in quantum mechanics. Use of quantum correlations for faster-than-light communication is thought to be flawed because of the no-communication theorem in quantum mechanics. However the theorem is not applicable to this experiment. In this experiment, the sender tries to signal 0 and 1 by narrowing the slit, or widening it, thus changing the probability distribution among the receivers detectors. If the no communication theorem were applicable, then no matter if the sender widens the slit or narrows it, the receiver should see the same probability distribution among his detectors. This is true, regardless of whether the device was used for communication i.e. sans coincidence circuit, or not i.e. in coincidence. See also Loopholes in Bell test experiments <laughs>